there are numerous benefits of having mulberry trees in your yard. Number one being, of course, the obvious, so much delicious fruit to enjoy out in the garden. Number two, it provides habitat for numerous species in our area, including blue jays, um, chickadees. Now we have squirrels and chipmunks hanging out in here. There's some crazy birds that come in here, also known as European starlings, and just all sorts of stuff. Typically, I'd advise not eating any berry off of a tree, but I definitely know that these mulberries are good. Yeah, and they're black. They look kind of like blackberries and raspberries, like had a baby together. And when they're pink, they're starting to turn. So in a couple of days, these little fellows will be a dark reddish blood red black kind of color and be super good to eat. The other good thing about mulberries is that chickens love them too. Oh my gosh, there's going on. <laughs> Just like that. Let's try this one more time. Ka, 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 ka. Not only are mulberries a real pleasure to eat, of course, they are also quite a pleasure to photograph. And today, oh, you hear that? There's two young blue jays currently enjoying some fresh mulberries up in the tree. I got some pictures of them just a moment ago. I'll share those at some point. Maybe right now I'll put those up or just in a bit. But aside from that, mulberries provide an excellent opportunity to capture some moments in the macro world. And with that in mind, today I had the Fujifilm S5200 to do just that. So the first thing I'm gonna do is turn the camera on, of course, and as always, I'm in aperture priority mode as indicated by the mode dial here. You can see it somewhere, focus camera. There it is, aperture priority is in there somewhere. But anyway, I am shooting at ISO 200 because of the shade and there's a slight breeze, so I need to make sure I am freezing the action of the leaves and the berries moving. And as well, I have to press this button right here next to the menu and to the left of the toggle to go into macro mode. And of course, the yellow flower will show up right there. All right. Typically, when I capture images like this, I zoom in using the, almost the full extent of the zoom range on the camera lens in macro mode. So I get a zoomed in, nice blurred background. And when I'm doing this, I typically look for beautiful backlight in the image surrounding the subject. So look at some of the berries here around the glow of some of these, there's some glow beyond the berries. So you're just not getting foreground interest, you're getting background interest too. All right, I just zoomed it back out, but what I'm gonna do is zoom in and hopefully this works. I usually don't capture images with the camera this far away from my body, but there's some berries there. Have to press the shutter and click. Not only are the berries beautiful to photograph, so are the leaves. As in any leaf, there's so much beauty to be had just by observing. And with observation comes acknowledging the interplay between dark and light, and that's what makes photography what it is. Observing and photographing and capturing the interplay between dark and light. Just look at these leaves It's all over the place that interplay the dark and the light So I think I'm going to try to grab a couple of images of that next. I mean look at the beautiful Vasculature of that leaf when I'm photographing leaves, especially with backlight I tend to utilize spot metering which shows Right here in the parentheses or the brackets. There's a circle in the middle. I mean spot metering So it's reading exactly oops in the middle of the frame for exposure, come on camera, where are ya? Oh, I gotta turn it back on. Anyway, spot metering, so you um, expose for the leaf and nothing else. I'm gonna put it back in macro, so there's the yellow leaves. ISO is still gonna be 200, and aperture priority, so F5 I think is the most wide open aperture I can use on this when I'm zoomed in. When photographing leaves, aside from the exposure parameters, Take note of the background around the leaf. So say this is the leaf I'm photographing right here. I'm looking around it for the interplay of dark and light because that will create that interest in the foreground, but still give that overall sense of depth. So I think this is a great spot to shoot right here. Let's see what happens with this spot.
the AA batteries in my camera are about to uh, go kaput on me for the time, so I'm just putting that away. But in the meantime, I wanted to show you my lavender moonflower that I've been keeping in the greenhouse. It's actually a pretty interesting specimen. There's a little spiky seed type thing there maybe. And then on top, we're starting to get another flower starting pretty soon, so I'm pretty excited about that. But really, I'm just really excited about how big it's become. It was just a single little unit, and now there's so much going on with it. And then next door, I have some maple seeds that I planted a couple days ago, and they're already starting to come out. It's really amazing what a greenhouse can do to kickstart some seeds. I also wanted to point out something interesting about these little maple saplings. Check out the symmetry of the leaves. When they first come out of the soil, symmetry is the name of the game. And it's interesting to look at and observe because symmetry is a big part of our natural world. And for example, there's symmetry in these strawberry leaves flanking the walkway into the garden. Symmetry is everywhere you look. In the ferns, in the rays of the sun peek through, through walnut tree branches and leaves, in white cedars, and milkweed flowers too. Symmetry exists everywhere. What better way to explore symmetry in the natural world and shape, form, bright and dark, just the whole natural experience than in your own backyard. And that's where I am today. Everything I've done today in this video has been in my own backyard. And I'm really excited because the Blue Jays are still hanging out and I think I'm going to try to run the battery dead on my S5200 and try to get a couple more Blue Jay shots because I know I can get some better ones than the ones I put up. And perhaps next week I'll share this with you. Thanks so much for watching and of course until next time, get outside and get some fresh air. I have the makings of Mustafa Saeed I'll be dropped in the